The 2014 capital budget has made its way through the state legislature. It's an important investment in our local communities. State Senator Scott Oslager shepherded the process through the Senate. He's here to talk with us about it in this week's Caucus Conversation. Senator, thanks so much for spending some time with us to talk about this today. Glad to be here. It's been a busy time here at the State House. It has. It has. A, this is a $2.4 billion piece of legislation. Tell us a little bit about the process. The process this time was really, truly unique, and I think it was probably one of the most inclusive and transparent since I've had the opportunity to serve in the legislature. This was a two-pronged process initially. The governor did designate certain areas of the state in different, different groups in those areas to put together proposals. They, they were usually Chamber of Commerce groups or, or growth associations, and they made recommendations. Also, my colleagues in the legislature, they were going back to their communities, finding out what the needs are, and they made their recommendations. So it was our job sort of to merge that. And there was also three silos this time of potential project areas. Higher education, which is traditional, the arts community was the second one, then community projects. And community projects would include a lot of variety of things, so mainly though toward economic development and job growth. So we worked through that. Also, when the bill came over to the Senate, I made a point to sit down with members of both parties in the Senate and talk to me about what their needs are and get to know their requests a lot better. Uh, it's the first time uh, since I've been there, I know his finance chairman has done that because I've been in the legislature thanks to the people of Stark County for a long time, but the finance chairman never asked me to come sit down with he or she to talk about it. So it was a good inclusive process with a lot of groups throughout the state of Ohio, with our legislators working together, and with the leadership, and again, the big three leadership finally putting the bill together. Well, I guess it's important to point out uh, that you know, there are a number of different things that, you know, different bills that we do here at the State House, some that focus specifically on transportation infrastructure, things of that nature. This capital budget is specifically, as you mentioned, uh, more community investment, uh, community projects, arts, um, entertainment uh, to, to a certain degree, all designed to really kind of improve quality of life for Ohioans here. No question about it. In economic development, and I know there's tens of thousands of jobs they feel will be created, about 31,000 jobs as a result of this appropriation, which is a great thing as we're trying to build our, our economy back in the state. But the whole, there's a whole range of, of, of areas. It was very fascinating that to go through the list. I had a list about this high, and I'm not exaggerating, of requests, and I read through them all. But uh, the members did a great job in trying to present the views of their community. Well, just running through some of the highlights, we mentioned it's about $2.4 billion, um, $675 million to local school construction projects, $454 million towards higher education, um, $574 to state-owned facilities, that's kind of like maintenance and upgrades of facilities, mm -hmm. uh, $369 million for local infrastructure, uh, $100 million for Clean Ohio funding. Uh, talk a little bit about what that is. Clean Ohio was approved by the voters many years ago, and it's a revolving fund that allows uh, projects to be paid for, then they're paid off, and we can pro perhaps reappropriate some of that fund. And what that basically does is to go to parks, recreation, trails, and to preserve green fields. And this has helped a lot of the communities in the state uh, with their recreational activities. So it's a, it's a good project, and uh, we're putting in this budget, we've put in this budget another $100 million toward that. Now, there's some really long, uh, large projects, one that I know is important to you specifically because it's, it's in Stark County, and uh, you know, it's kind of important to me, too. I'm a big football <laughs> fan, but the, um, the Stark County Pro Football Hall of Fame project, talk about, talk about that. This was an exciting project that was brought to me by the, uh, the local community chambers of commerce. The legislators in Stark County sat down, as, and this was part of Governor Kasich's voyage uh, with his folks to get pro projects approved. And uh, they, they determined, uh, the different chambers of commerce did determine that this would be our top priority. And we were able to fund $10 million to the Pro Football Hall of Fame for Fawcett Stadium repairs and maintenance and rehabilitation. Fawcett Stadium sits right beside the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It houses the, the actual enshrinement ceremony as well as the Pro Football Hall of Fame game and, and other activities throughout the course of the year. It's very vital because the Pro Football Hall of Fame, this particular project, we didn't feel was just a local Stark County project, which, but obviously Stark County would benefit from it. But this is a statewide project, because the Pro Football Hall of Fame, if I say humbly, is probably one of the key areas uh, 
key institutions in the whole world that uh, would be recognized in the whole world by people relating to Ohio. So tens of thousands of people come in for the festival, as well as, of course, the normal folks that come through the hall. So this was a very vital project to get done to make sure that the Hall of Fame's activities, the festival activities, stayed in Stark County, stayed in the state of Ohio. And this will be matched then by about $14 million of local effort. So the state was able to put the foundational in at $10 million. The local community now is looking for another $14 million to get this stadium redone. Another big one, is, uh, more, more central Ohio focused, I guess, but it is again, a, a, it covers the entire state, is the um, Quarter Horse Congress, which happens here in Columbus every year. I understand it's one of the biggest in the nation. And you can see that when they're here in Columbus. Uh, and the, yeah, the activities that it generates and the economic spin through Columbus is large, it's Franklin County. But again, people come from all over the country to this Quarter Horse Congress. And uh, I see people during that week uh, that are dressed in their, their cowboy outfits. It's kind of neat. You see them in the restaurants, in the stores. And you also see, to, to give you an idea of the volume of traffic, if you come down 71 in the morning, it's when that Congress is going on, it's blocked. At first you think it's a car wreck. Then you realize it's like, no, the Quarter, House, Quarter Horse Congress is going on. So it's economic impact not just for Franklin County, but the state is very large. Now, now Franklin and Stark are two big counties, but this capital budget, it, it, you know, one of the efforts that was made in this process was to make sure that there was funding that was allocated all across the state. Yes, very much so. You, if you'd go through the list of projects that were approved, you'd see little theaters that go throughout the state, arts projects throughout the state, parks and recreation across the state, historical museums across the state, large and small communities. Uh, the arts just in general, the performance places are, are, are in here. So we do try to make sure that uh, all the state of Ohio is included when we do this budget and all the state of Ohio benefits. Now one very important point to make about this. It is a, it is a huge investment, $2.4 billion. Um, but this is affordable. Could talk about how that happened. Yes, the state constitution uh, says that we cannot spend more than 5% of our operating dollars toward debt amortization. This puts us up to around 4%. Director Keene testified before my committee that he is comfortable with this. So this, this whole project, this whole budget is done without the fear of raising taxes or anything like that in the people of Ohio. This comes about because of the good management we've tried to do in this state to make sure that the state is in sound, sound, I should say, sound financial footing and that uh, we do have that space to do this. Uh, as you know, we have about $1.5 in our rainy day fund. We're very conservative spenders here in Ohio. So this can all be done without a tax increase, so the people don't have to fear about that, but in, in well within our, our debt limitations. In fact, Director Keene mentioned that the state's bond rating right now is AA plus and AA1, which is one of the highest that you can get. So we are managing some money well, so if people were concerned that this could be have some uh, long-term ramifications that wouldn't be so good, that's not the case. We're, we're in solid financial footing here. Yeah. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. As always, keep up to date with us every day on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Ohio Senate GOP, or visit our website, ohiosenate.gov Republicans. Thanks for watching.